We're getting two RG Ally consoles. Nvidia is getting so desperate with the 40 series and AMD's latest flagship 7800X3D is literally exploding. That's not even a joke. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, April 24th, 2023. We're gonna start off today talking about the ROG Ally and how there is another Geekbench pop-up of the specs that we could potentially be expecting out of it, except it's very different from the one that we talked about last week, which happened to be eight cores, 16 threads, and a 12 compute unit RDNA 3 GPU. This one appears to be six cores, 12 threads, and only have four or compute units of the RDNA 3 GPU, making this a much smaller setup. Additionally, it's only gonna boost to 4.9 gigahertz as opposed to the 5.1 gigahertz on the one that we saw last week. So this kind of goes in line with some other reports that have been coming out that Asus is anticipating selling two different versions, a lower version and a higher version of the ROG Ally. They're gonna have the same base specs of the 1080p 120 hertz screen, but this does bring into consideration that the six core four compute unit GPU might actually be the reason why they're gonna be able to hit the price point of $649 as has been specified by some other rumors out there is because it's not going to be as fast as we're expecting it to be. They're giving you a cut down version and then the higher end version is definitely gonna be over $1,000. If they were able to deliver on that 780M with the eight core at 5.1 gigahertz for $650, I'd be tremendously excited. Now it's just, this is neat but it's not as fast as I want it to be to compete with the Steam Deck. We'll have to see exactly if this is true or not or the price points that they come in at. This makes it trickier. It makes it a different launch than, you know, I was really hoping for it to be. Let me know whether or not this cut down version of the ROG Ally is gonna make it into your system. And it turns out that the RTX 4070 is not making it into a lot of systems or potentially the RTX 40 series is not selling as well as Nvidia wants it to sell overall, which is why now we're starting to see massive discounts pile up. We talked in last week's episode that there were several different price cuts that we're seeing to the RTX 40 series at Newegg and other retailers to the tune of $50 to $100. And now we have another retailer joining in on these discounts that we're seeing. Micro Center is now going to be offering a $100 Steam gift card with any RTX 40 series GPU with the tagline video cards put, buy one card, get two. I don't like that video cards. So even after taking into consideration that you could sell that $100 gift card, that's effectively discounting the RTX 4070 by a full 15%. And if you consider the value that AMD is giving you with The Last of Us Part 1, if you take that off, then it's a $500 GPU, you get free games with it, but you can also buy any of the other RTX 40 series cards that Micro Center has on offer and they will give you a $100 Steam gift card with those. Now, whether or not this is a Micro Center in-house promotion or an Nvidia promotion, where they're giving them a kickback on the back end. I don't know the details of that, but it does seem to continue with the idea that the 40 series is having a hard time selling. We've seen other countries have a price drop. Germany saw the 4070 drop 9%. China saw it drop 6%. Poland saw it drop 8%. These graphics cards are just not moving. The 4070 is supposed to be the volume unit. This is the one that it, Nvidia was expecting to sell a whole lot, and it just doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. And if you look over on Amazon, it can't even outsell the RX 580 2048 SP, which is just basically a mining card that some company is rebranding over in China and then shipping it out. But fun fact, this company emails me like twice a week to do some sort of advertisement on this graphics card. I don't trust them, which is why I haven't done it. But the fact that this is selling at number eight and a 4070 is at number seven, and that's it on Amazon. And the 4070 has been in stock at MSRP is the craziest part. The 3060 is occupying the three of the top four spots, the 3060 Ti is number three, the 4070 Ti is number five, and the 6600 is coming in at number six. All of that makes sense. I could see why that's justified, but the 4070 just barely beating out a 580 in 2023 is just absolutely obscene. However, there's other retailers out there like Mine Factory over in Germany where they said that the 4070 tripled the sales of the 4070 Ti and is doubling what the current AMD cards are listed at. But what we're seeing from other American retailers where we have had a lot of these GPUs in stock at MSRP, people are just really not lining up to upgrade to the 4070. Let me know, does this $100 gift card from Micro Center help to incentivize you to go pick it up, essentially knocking the card down to $4.99 if you were planning on buying $100 worth of games with it. 
Does that, does that help you? But another indication that 40 series might be struggling or an indication that Intel is struggling, not quite clear on this one, but a Japanese retailer is offering a free ARC A750 with the purchase of an RTX 4090. Either they're trying to get rid of excess stock of the A750, or they're trying to get rid of excess stock of the Nvidia GPUs, not quite clear, but you can get this Asus Tough GPU with the free A750 right there, which helps to discount a little bit. Additionally, they have a loyal customer discount, which helps to drop the price. But I'm curious if, a company like Micro Center Newegg, Amazon starts offering you an Intel GPU with a 4090. Would you spring for it at that point? Give the A750 to your kids or to your friends or, you know, potentially use it as like an AV1 encoder streaming GPU while you game on the 4090. There's a whole host of opportunities of things you could do with a free Intel GPU. Let me know what you think of that down below. But I know that Reese probably won't have as good of a deal as that on UFD Deals today. Yo, happy Monday. Welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, and if you're feeling creative this week, then why not pick up the Flash Forge Photo 8.9 inch resin 3D printer. This big boy is going for only $149, making it 32% or $70 off. And just remember, keep your resin 3D printer in a well-ventilated area. It's just good practice. And speaking of things you need to keep well-ventilated, the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X is back. You can pick up this beautiful 16-core Zen 3 CPU for only $469 with the promo code, making it a total of $330 off. And that's it. Those are the deals for today. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, bud. You give me deal, I give you video of the Pixel Fold. Actually, I don't know if Freeze gave us any deals, but I'm still going to give you a video of the Pixel Fold anyways, because that has been officially leaked. You can see in this video that this thing has a whopping bezel on the inside. It has the nice display on the outside. You can see that you do see a crease on it, especially once it turns off. But while it's on, it's not so super noticeable. I really like the outside finish. The Pixel Fold is likely to go on sale sometime in May, but it's supposed to go on sale for around $1,700, which just puts it out of my price bracket and something that I'm not gonna want. What do you think of the bezel that you saw on the Pixel Fold? Were you interested beforehand? Not interested now? Let me know. And ARM looks to be interested in making its own chips. Typically, the way ARM does things is they license out their architecture. So you have companies like Apple or Qualcomm making designs based on ARM's architecture, and ARM might do some prototyping now and again with TSMC, kind of come up with a few concepts, but typically they don't bring that for sale. However, FT is reporting that that's going to be changing. ARM, especially as they're looking to IPO later this year or next year, is looking to actually get into hardware sales and that they've been in discussion with that and that ARM might actually have some of their own chips that are available for companies to purchase to put into their different products, which would shake up the industry quite a bit. ARM has never really been a competitor. It's just been something that's produced these chips and it helps to kind of give an indication if this was in play before Nvidia was going to buy them out. They were thinking along this way of, hey, we have to come out with some hardware. You're telling me that if Nvidia was making chips with ARM, that they wouldn't have had this like crazy monopoly thing where they were like, you know what? We're not going to sell our license out to Apple unless they're going to pay us a whopping ton to keep it because now they're competing directly with us. I, I think it was a good move that Nvidia never got to touch ARM. I'm curious to see where ARM and them making their own processors is going to go. We'll keep you updated as we hear more details on that. Now I'm going to keep you updated on this next story. The 7800X 3D, they're dying. They're roughly exploding in people's computers and it's happening to several different people. So this is a report that came out over the weekend on Reddit where a user posted their 7800X 3D with their Strix board where you can see a physical indentation in both the motherboard and the CPU from where it overheated and caused some actual physical damage to it. So the post, pretty popular, saying 7800X 3D just killed itself and my MOBO with the poster providing several images of it and giving us a lot of detail saying that the CPU pad is physically bulging. I imagine there was too much heat on the contacts causing the pad to expand, not that the CPU has an internal component which exploded. Additionally, this is coming out after there's other YouTube channels and repair shops that are talking about how they're seeing this exact same thing happen with X3D chips, but it only appears to be happening on Asus motherboards. It's not any other type of motherboard that's out there. And additionally, Steve from Gamers Nexus contacted the poster saying that they will pay for both the board and the CPU at full retail value so that they could have it, make the RMA easy 
jersey for this poster. And the poster did say that they've contacted Steve. So hopefully we get some sort of deep dive into what's going on from Gamers Nexus soon. I'll keep you updated when that happens. But a few more details coming out from the poster indicating that both AMD and Asus have reached out to them saying AMD was quick to respond and provided a prepaid shipping label for RMA. I also heard from Asus a little later who also offered replacements. It just came a little too late as to reduce downtime and for some stellar analysis content, I have already sent them off to Steve. No shade to Asus though, it's only been one business day and this occurred at the end of the week. Both AMD and Asus have done a fantastic job in trying to make this right. I do feel for AMD and Asus here as they did request that the parts be sent to them. It would have been good to get them to it first to provide an official solution quicker. Sorry guys. After speaking with Asus, it was brought to my attention that this technically isn't warrantied with AMD due to the use of Expo. So that's the overclocking of the memory on the motherboard with the user saying, with this in mind, as I stated above, I purposely went back to a BIOS version, which posted with Expo, which was not an approved version for the X3D series CPUs and chalked this up to BIOS instability rather than any potential intention by the BIOS engineers. So for people on a similar build, I'd say just make sure to update your BIOS and forget Expo for the time being until we know things are stable and working as intended. The cause here is still speculative. However, it may be a good safety measure to take. So that is a good recommendation for anybody who might be running a 7800, 7900, or 7950 X3D with an Asus motherboard. Be sure to not have it overclocked with Expo at the current moment. This is not the first report that we've seen of X3D chips dying. 5800 X3D chips were dying from over voltage. The 7950 X3D, DeBauer found out that it dies at voltages that were totally fine for the 7950X. It's a problem that is out there and it looks like that there might be some issues in the Asus BIOS that are causing these problems. The poster also giving more details indicating that they were on a 7600X beforehand. The 7800X3D was running fine for the last week. There was no CPU overclocking. Everything else was fine and that they returned home after leaving their system idle with nothing strenuous running and then it was unable to post. And the AIO was hella toasty upon removal will burn you hot, specifically the bracket. I speculate the short to have caused the heat, especially if it continued for a short while. No form of protection was tripped. The pins on the LGA do look intact, just recessed and slightly charred. So this could potentially have even been a fire hazard that could have caused some further issues later on down the line. It's not quite clear, but also the poster showing some enhanced versions of the CPU. And you can see that it's physically cracked along where that little bulge is. You can see that there's lines next to the pad where that shouldn't be there. So this does appear to be an actual issue that's happening with Asus and 7800X3D chips. It's not quite clear how widespread this is. We do need more details. I do trust Steve from Gamers Nexus to give us a good detailed analysis at it. We do obviously want to hear Asus and AMD side of the story as well. So it's tough to say what was the right move there. Probably for content reasons, Steve getting it makes a whole lot of sense. But we need to find out, is this plaguing other manufacturers? Are other motherboards at risk? What about Asus motherboards specifically is causing this to happen. There's a whole lot we don't know. Stay safe out there, friends, especially if you're on the 7800X 3D. Again, maybe don't put on Expo memory. Don't run it in any sort of overclock. Keep your chips safe. Hopefully they don't burn up and hopefully there's no more serious damage that happens because especially with how physically deformed both the motherboard and CPU were, I've never seen that before in my entire life. And so I can't imagine just how hot it must have gotten at those contact points. It would just be a shame to hear if there's some sort of further damage that happens where potentially even the PC, the rest of the components catch on fire or something worse happens to somebody's house. Looks like a problem. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. Obviously, if Steve posts the video, we'll let you know about that here on Hot News, and I'll be back for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.